Hey, this is Joe from Personas. One of my favorite plugins in Studio One is called Red Light Distortion. It's kind of like hot sauce. I kind of like to put it on everything. Uh, but today I want to share with you three specific ways that I like to use Red Light Distortion in my mixes. Number one, lead vocals. This is a song that I recorded a few years ago and never released it. It just didn't quite come together, but I, I found it kind of searching through some archives and uh, it was a cool vibe. And I'll show you, demonstrate three different places on this song where I would use distortion or at least try it out to see if it works for the song. So here is... This is just the raw tracks. I don't think there's much in the way of plugins here. Oh, would you still love me? Would you still love me the same? So sometimes what you need on a vocal is for it to have some grit. Now part of that can be grit, like the vocalist sings with a, a little grit, uh, uh, kind of a little bit of a grit there. That's part of it. But if it's not there or you want to accentuate it even more, red light distortion to the rescue. So I'm going to drag red light distortion right here onto the vocal track. And for vocals, typically... Typically what I'm going to do on a vocal is I'm not going to have the mix knob set all the way to 100%. What's great about this plugin is built in, you can set it right on a track and then use the mix knob to figure out how much distortion that you want. So typically what I'll do is I'll drag it onto a track. Um, I'll choose what kind of distortion I want. For a vocal, let's just try that hard tube. And I'll dial in a really gritty distortion. Then I'll blend it back in with the mix knob. This is also known as parallel processing. So here's what that vocal sounds like with some distortion on it. Let's dial that in. Oh, would you still love me? Would you still love me the same? Oh, would you still love me? Would you still love me the same? Oh, would you still love me? Would you still love me the same? I dig that. It's got it's it's more coming out on the loud parts, which is kind of what you'd expect. It's the equivalent of if we ran this vocal through an old console and we were driving the preamp, but it didn't drive on every phrase, but it drove on those louder phrases, right? That's kind of the idea here. But 100% probably doesn't make a lot of sense in the mix. Oh, would you still love me? Would you still? A little loud. We'll bring the volume down here, but we'll also bring the mix knob down. So if I bring it down to like 50%, obviously we're getting about halvesies there with clean sound and distorted sound. Oh, would you still love me? Still a lot of distortion there. So we'll just bring it, I'll start at 100, hit play, pull it back to probably, I'm going to guess around 20, 30% to get a nice blend between the two. Oh, would you still love me? Would you still love me the same? Oh, would you still love me? Would you still love me the same? Gives it some nice grit. It's a little muddy and thick, so what we can do is just take the low frequencies, the knob here, and just thin out the distortion. That should fix the problem. Oh, would you still love me? Would you still love me the same? Oh, would you still love me? Would you still? Oh, would you still love me? Oh, would you still love me? So it just gives it an old school vibe. We still get the clear vocal coming through, mostly the clear vocal, but that distortion really does add a vibe there. And then you can decide where to put this in your chain. Do you want this at the beginning so it's just the sound of kind of the raw vocal? Then you compress an EQ, or maybe do you clean up the sound with EQ and compression and then add the distortion? The distortion will behave wildly differently depending on where you put it in the chain. Specifically, how much low frequency energy is hitting red light distortion will determine determine kind of how it drives. There's so much flexibility here. If you haven't played around with it, I encourage you, get in there and mess with the knobs. You've got several different types of distortion, and then you've got a bunch of variations within each type, including different stages, kind of how much drive is there, and then how much drive you set, the mix knob, all these other settings here. There's a lot of tone shaping you can do with this plugin. Let's jump into the second one. Number two is as old as dirt bass guitar. Specifically, I learned this in Nashville from Nashville engineers who were putting distortion on bass tracks in like traditional country songs. And I first thought, what? But turns out they were doing it so that the bass would cut through. Not so that the final bass part goes, zzz, 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 but that that distortion, that extra harmonic information helped the bass to sit on top of the mix nicely. So you don't end up with a distorted sounding bass unless that's what you want. You just end up with a bass that has more clarity to it. So right now, here's what that bass sounds like with the drums. We can hear it, but it'd be cool if it had a little growl to it that helped it kind of cut through without having to crank the volume. So if I throw red light distortion on the bass, let's go with... We'll stick with hard tube for now. Let's just see what that sounds like. Yeah, 
just gives it some grit. And now we can adjust how much of that grit we want by pulling this high frequency knob down. If it's a little too gritty, we can pull that down a little bit. Now that's obviously over the top, but when we bring the blend knob down to maybe 20, 30%, You get all of the original bass, but now you've got that kind of grit layered on top of it. And you could do this with a send on a separate channel, but because there's a mix knob built in, you can do it right on the channel like this. So then with drums and guitars, it's got some attitude now. So you may have to massage that a little bit. That might be too much for the quieter sections, but specifically like right here on this section. Listening to the first version when, without the distortion on there, I couldn't tell with when I was listening with the bass and drums that the bass did this octave thing. It's cool. I didn't really notice it before because it was kind of just hidden in the kind of simple, clean sound of the bass. Listen to it. You can kind of hear it now that I'm listening for it, but I didn't notice it before. But as soon as we added the distortion on there, suddenly I hear that part a lot more clearly. Now these quieter sections, you can tell I've overdone it with the distortion. You'd want to dial that back and be a little more, a little more proper with it. But you can hear here, you can hear here, hear here, how the bass cuts through a little bit better. All right, let's move on to number three. Number three, of course, is drums. Typically with drums, you can go kind of one of two directions. You can put it on your entire drum bus, or you can just put it on something like a room mic and just mangle it to death and then blend that in. For the sake of demonstration, I'll put it on the entire drum mix. So here's what the drums sound like. So he's doing a real, just kind of a tom thing. Very cool vibe, and I always wonder, just in case, I almost always do this. Let's just see what it sounds like with a little distortion on there. Now this one, I'm gonna leave the mix 100% just for a change of pace. I'm gonna set it to soft tube because that's the chillest one. And then I'm gonna just kind of start increasing the drive and just see kind of what it does. What does it do? Let's find out. Obviously it made it louder, but it feels like there's a little difference in tone. Let's turn it on and off and see if we hear it. There's just something to it. And if he really was digging in and started hitting that snare really hard, we might hear that even more. But there's just kind of a, kind of a hmm, a hmm, a hmm. It just, it, it's hard to explain, but it just gives it a little bit of warmth, a little bit of darkness. And of course we can go nuts with it and crank it up all the way if we want. Cool thing about this is it's hard to, I know people say this all the time, but like legit, it's pretty hard to make red light distortion sound bad. Even at this setting where the drive is all the way up, it still has a cool sound to it. It's a musical sound. It's not like a ridiculously just unusable sound. Like for a certain style of music, I'm thinking like more kind of indie rock, heavier stuff. This could be perfect for like a section of a song or a specific song where the drums just need to have a different vibe. The way it makes those toms sound kind of gritty and in stereo, even with this like chiller, like music underneath, it's still pretty cool. It's over the top, but what you'll notice is two things. One, of course it adds some grit. Two, it adds some warmth and kind of darkens the sound. But three, the thing about distortion is it's kind of a form of compression. That's why when you turn up the gain on a guitar amp, it sustains longer, right? It squishes the sound. It's compressing the sound. Some people refer to that, how much drive on an amp by how it's compressing. Uh, that makes audio folks like me go, what? But then you think about it and say, well, yeah, I guess it does. So distortion is adding an element of compression, which is why these drums sound like I put some sort of aggressive compressor on there. Turns out it was just old red light distortion.
Now, if that's too aggressive, we can still grab the old mix knob and pull it down. And we have near infinite possibilities of tone in between. And this is just one plug-in on some raw tracks. Okay, there's a room reverb as well. That's it. Now imagine if you were doing a proper mix and really put this right where it needs to be in the mix. It's just beautiful and wonderful. So if you have not played with red light distortion, write this down. Go play with it on something you've already got. Just throw red light distortion on anything and see what happens. It's a really fun plug-in. Sounds great. Has a ton of tones. And if you're not using it, you're missing out on a whole spectrum, of a whole palette of tones that are available to you right inside of Studio One. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. See ya.